thank you so much for calling in and learning about the Community Finance Fellowship at Mission Driven Finance. We are delighted to be launching this and for so many of you to be expressing interest. I'm going to pass it. Uh, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Lauren. I am co-founder and director of community engagement here at Mission Driven Finance, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Shreya Sasaki, our COO, and Shreya is going to go over a couple of pieces. Hi, welcome everybody to the fellowship information session. As Lauren mentioned, my name is Shreya Sasaki. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Mission Driven Finance, and on the next slide, we'll go over the agenda for today's information session. And then from there, I'll be handing it over to Lauren, who will talk a little bit more about who Mission Driven Finance is and what our goals are for the fellowship program. Next slide. One sec. For those of you who are calling in by phone, we've got a couple of housekeeping notes up on the screen. Um, so we have many people on the call today, so all of your phones and microphones are muted to ensure the best audio quality for everybody else. Um, to ask questions, there for the folks that are on um, through Zoom on the computer, you can use the raise your hand function or type into the chat box at any time. Those of you on the phone, um, please, you can send us an email at jobs at missiondrivenfinance.com if you have a question that's not being addressed, and we'll pull that up. And finally, do note that this session is being recorded. We're going to provide the slides and, and recording out to attendees and also post it on our website after the call. Great. Thank you, Lauren. So what you can expect in terms of the agenda today is we will be going over who Mission Driven Finance is, why we are launching the fellowship program, what the fellowship application expectations are, followed by a question and answer session, and then we will provide our contact information so that you can follow up after the session as needed. Now I'll hand it over to Lauren to talk about Mission Driven Finance and who we are. Who are we? We are the Social Venture Unit. Um, Mission Driven Finance is an impact investment firm dedicated to building a financial system that ensures good businesses can access sufficient, affordable capital. We're built from the ground up with a single purpose, to make it easy to invest in your community. So all of our funds and structured products are designed to close financial gaps that close opportunity gaps. We work with local and national investors to help them create the impact that they want and work with small businesses and communities to help them get the capital they need. We were launched in 2016 here in San Diego, California and are a certified B Corporation. This picture from last year is when our team was eight. eight. Yes, eight. That is how many people are up here. Uh, we're now a team of 10 and we'll be with the fellows growing to 15. So we're really, really excited. Um, just to put names to the faces that you're seeing, you have Louie Wynn, who is our Chief Investment Officer, then Shreya Sasaki, our COO, me, our Director of Community Engagement, Nancy O'Leary, our Chief Financial Officer, Carrie Stokes-Holst, our Senior Manager of Impact and Borrower Services, Tiana Smith, our Community Communications Coordinator, Heather Burke, our Director of Investor Relations, and David Lynn, co-founder and CEO. Great. So why are we doing this? Why launch a fellowship? We're in, as an investment firm, why would we want to expand this? Um, so really we see, we always are focused on closing those capital gaps and closing opportunity gaps. We want to co-create a world with better wealth that's more evenly distributed and giving people opportunities evenly across our society. And we see in our seat in finance that that's not always the case. And in large part believe that the lack of diversity of talent in the finance sector creates these implicit biases that is then rippling out into how capital is being deployed. So our theory is that if we change who's working in finance, make it accessible, and help build the capacity of individuals from overlooked and 
underestimated communities, that then we can flow capital into those places where it's currently not flowing and be able to create more inclusive opportunity for all. So really, this focus on um, creating new ways that people can fully achieve their potential is what we are all about on a daily basis. And we're excited to be thinking about how we can be intentionally building more diversity in the space. You saw on our team picture that we have an intentionally diverse team, pretty uh, non-traditional look for a financial services or investment firm. And we want to keep going with that, that really know that we are have a variety of lived and, and worked experiences, but that we don't fully reflect our community either. That we want to bring other lived and worked experiences into our field so we can be more sensitive, uh, we can increase our cultural awareness, and that we can then help graduate individuals on to be able to work in other firms and build a coalition of folks that are moving capital in different ways. And we know that Part of the lack of diversity in finance comes from the fact that there are not really great on-ramps for this sector. So we said, how, do we, how can we create a break in the cycle of you can't get experience unless you have a job and you can't get a job unless you have experience? Let's just give people a job and experience. Let's help them get onto that pathway and work with us. So that's why we're here. We really want to be creating these pathways for individuals, but more importantly, pathways for capital and pathways for communities. So our fellowship model is that we work with our cohort of fellows as well as Harder and Company, which is a community research firm, and we create this uh, community of practice where peer practitioners, fellows, mission driven finances team, are learning together. We are creating formal training as well as learning by doing through actually deploying capital. At this point, we've put Mission Driven Finance has invested more than $5 million into the community, and our goal is to, with the fellows, take that to $20 million this year. So your participation as part of our team growing our capacity helps us to really grow how much we can put out into the community and continue to do that in a very sensitive way. In terms of the fellowship application timeline, we're currently at today um, with our information session. Working backwards, our applications opened on January 8th and applications are due on February 7th by 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. After that, over a couple of weeks, we will be holding interviews that will have both an in-person or video call option. By February 14th, based on our screening process, all, and all candidates will be informed of their application status. By February 28th, we expect that fellowship offers will be made and the fellowship will begin on March 23rd. Our fellowship begins on March 23rd, and due to the nature of the fellowship model, including the cohort onboarding and learning model, we will only have one start date on March 23rd. The next slide goes over the frequently asked questions that are available on Mission Driven Finance's website. The frequently asked questions are divided into these categories, including learning more about the community finance fellowship program, fellowship experience, qualifi qualifications and expectations, the application and selection process, along with application tips. As mentioned earlier, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions on today's, during today's information session. We recommend using that time to not ask questions that are already published on the website. And after today's session, those questions will be available through the recording of this information session and on the website as well. The next set of slides are going to cover the application requirements, including the main components that you can expect to see on the Google application form. These include the resume, short essay questions, areas of interest, and references. 
We strongly recommend you read the entire application before starting and check out the application tips section on the Frequently Asked Questions website. In terms of your resume, we are looking for five years of experience defined as lived, learned, and labored that indicate your ability to succeed in the fellowship. What do we mean by that? In terms of lived experiences, we are looking to um, see the ability to relate to and build relationships across cultures and communities. We'd like to see in your resume some of your leadership experiences. We're also looking for a professional proficiency in English and, have, and looking for potentially a high level of proficiency in another language. That would be desirable. We're also looking for passion for creating social change, transforming the finance industry, or creating a more inclusive economy. In terms of learned, at minimum, we're looking for applicants that hold a high school diploma or GED. And when we reference labored, what we're referring to is at least two years of volunteer or paid experience is preferred. And we're looking for volunteer or work experience in designing, dreaming, or delivering leadership to local community efforts. This experience can be in the public, private, nonprofit, academic, entrepreneurial, artistic, and or technological sectors. The next slide is gonna cover that instead of a cover letter, there are gonna be five short essay questions that will ask you about your lived experience, imagine if capital had flowed, what would you invest in, life goals, and our favorite, what is your superpower? So the first essay question is going to ask, tell us about your lived experiences in the community you feel most connected to. This question can include your experiences either in a geographic community, a demographic community, a specific industry, whether that's housing, childcare, or health, perhaps the structure of a type of business you've worked in or nonprofit, or however you define your community. We're looking for in your responses a little bit about how this community might have been underestimated and how does that shape the work that you're currently doing or what you intend to do in the future. The next question is gonna ask, has someone you know had a challenge getting the money necessary to move their business or nonprofit dream forward? What could be different if they had the capital or loan they needed to achieve what they were dreaming for? The third essay question will ask you for an example of a company, real or theoretical, you would invest in if you ran your own impact investing firm. The company could offer a type of product or service, and we would wanna know why you believe this company is creating or will create a positive impact. The fourth essay question will ask a little bit more about your life goals, and how do you expect that this fellowship will help you get there. And the last question is, what's your superpower? The next uh, slide will go over another question we have in our application. And that's gonna ask you about what your areas of interest are. We're gonna ask you in terms of your job functions at Mission Driven, in terms of your job function and how you would like to connect that with what we do at Mission Driven Finance. So those categories are gonna to refer to borrower services, which refers to assessing prospective borrowers and presenting potential investments for approval. Borrower technical assistance, which refers to direct support and research navigation to improve companies' impact, management, or financial components. Community engagement, including communications and active outreach to underestimated organizations. Financial management and operations, including portfolio monitoring, tracking, and accounting, or investor relations. This includes activities such as portfolio analysis, reporting, and storytelling. As mentioned, these job functions are listed in the application and will relate to the specific projects or research areas that you will be working on after receiving full onboarding and orientation as part of the fellowship program. We will also ask you about what you would want to apply your work towards. 
meaning we're interested in understanding areas of impact that connect with you. Those could include things like community development, education, including early childhood education, environmental justice, health and social determinants of health, immigration, quality jobs and workforce development, and inclusive and affordable housing. The last set of requirements that we wanted to go through with regards to the application are references. So in the application, we will ask for full names, contact information, which could include a phone number or email, whichever works best for your reference, and the relationship to you. We will give applicants a heads up if we plan to contact your references. Next, we'd like to open up the information session to questions and answers. As mentioned earlier, there are two options to ask your questions. The first is that you can enter your questions in the chat box. The other option is that you can raise your hand through the raise your hand function through the Zoom information. And then last, as Lauren mentioned earlier, um, if you are unable to access either of these opportunities, feel free to email the jobs at Mission Driven Finance and we will go ahead and answer those questions as well. As we get started in allowing participants to submit their questions, we have a few that we can go over first. The first question is around, how will my application be reviewed and evaluated? So the application is gonna be screened and then moved to the next phase of review by a group of internal Mission Driven Finance team members. Per the timeline, you will be updated on the status at key points in the process. This includes becoming aware of the outcomes of the screening process on February 14th, and then offers being made on February 28th. Another question that we've seen is, what can you expect to learn over the course of the year? Some of the expectations include, during the onboarding and orientation period, you'll learn more about the mission-driven finance work culture, and core knowledge around what is impact investing, what does it mean to be involved in borrower services, and what does the borrower ecosystem look like in San Diego County. We'll also go over the mission-driven finance portfolio, including deal flow, how we screen and assess potential opportunities, and then towards the latter part of the fellowship, based on your area of interest, we'll also be working on certain projects and research in those areas of interest. Another question we've had is what can I expect post the fellowship program? Mission Driven Finance will not be able to hire fellows as permanent employees after the fellowship. However, if an opportunity opens up at Mission Driven Finance, you may apply. But what you can expect during the course of the fellowship is that you will work closely with your supervisor on identifying your future career goals. And in the last few months of your fellowship, what you can expect is conversations with your supervisor on a plan to implement those next steps around your future career opportunities. This will include mission-driven finance, providing support and ensuring that community connections are made that help the fellow advance those career goals. So if anybody has questions, feel free to put those into the chat box or raise your hand and we will call on you and happy to answer any other questions that people are having. One question that I've been asked when I've been out at community events is, do I need to have financial experience to do this? Um, it's a fellowship in finance in an investment firm. What kind of proficiency do I need to have? And our answer is not a lot. We need you to see, have a lot of curiosity and a fire in the belly to change how your community is currently operating, um, how you can create impact. What we would like to see, though, is some kind of comfort with technology. Um, we do use a lot of spreadsheets to do our analyses. You have to calculate some 
ratios, debt service coverage ratio in particular, you're like, what is this? Um, but that comes from being able to use a template spreadsheet that we have. So being able to have some, some kind of comfort with those, those types of tools that we'll be using, um, but don't need to have deep expertise in finance. That's what we're trying to be able to provide. Another question that we got, is this a full-time opportunity? Yes, this is uh, expected to be 40 hours a week, full-time in standard business hours here in our office in San Diego. Um, there is, uh, we'll be able to, some, some students have asked about having flexibility, but our goals are to really have fellows be learning with us and with each other. And so having that time be structured and intentional in a cohort setting at once. Question came in about the visa. Um, mentioned that we're not able to sponsor visas um, for, for individuals that do not have a work permit at this time. Um, we would be willing to provide an acceptance letter if that helps to get a visa. Um, we will need to have, at the time of starting, some form of documentation that you can work in the United States. We also recommend as a follow-up to that question to send any additional information to jobs at missiondrivenfinance.com and that way we can ensure we're able to do the background research on the visa project and provide additional details in terms of our ability to provide that type of letter. There was a question around the full-time nature of this job opportunity or the fellowship opportunity, so I'll also add to that um, a little bit more about the full-time non-exempt status and the pay and access to benefits. So all fellows will be working on a full-time non-exempt status and paid at an annual rate of $45,000 a year. This roughly translates to $21.63 an hour. All fellows will have access to company standard benefits, including time off, expense reimbursement, and the option to join health, dental, and vision insurance plans. Uh, health insurance is partially covered through an employer contribution, while dental and vision insurance premium will be paid by the fellow. So we got another question of what is the average work experience of most applicants? And I don't know yet. Um, we've had a few people apply, and I'll, I'll offer again, this is our inaugural cohort of this fellowship. So we fully embrace learning by doing. We'll have the fellows be learning by doing, but we're also learning about this process as we are running it. Um, what I can say is that there are folks across the board in terms of um, work experiences that they've had that have expressed interest. Uh, we wanted to keep the bar low so that we have an accessible point of entry. That's the whole, whole orientation for us, is to make, make access where it's not currently. Um, so we have, I would say with the five years combined lived, learned, and labored, more of an emphasis on, we do have that two-year minimum work experience, and that is, uh, folks are hovering around that, um, early, early career professionals. Any other questions coming in? Okay. Somebody clarifying on how many hours per week is full time. Expectation is 40 hours. Um, these will be, as Shreya noted, non exempt employees, so there's an annualized salary, but it's paid on an hourly basis. All right, we've got about another minute. Um, of 
space for people to ask any other questions that they have. Again, um, if you don't get to have your question answered or as you go through the process of applying, you can, um, you can send those questions to us afterward, uh, but hopefully this has illuminated some things for you. One other question just came through. Is this opportunity designed for local or longtime San Diegans? Yes and no. We, are, we want to have diversity among our cohort, and some people have connections to local um, geographic communities, um, have long-term ties in those communities, and that's great. We certainly would love to see that, but there's also opportunity for people who are not native to San Diego or are fairly recent transplants um, or have not yet moved here maybe you want to move here now that it's January and other parts of the country are miserable. It's lovely here, please apply. Um, but that we want to see the ability to be a bridge builder. So if you have a community that you're well connected to, um, potentially working in a specific industry, and you know how to network when you come to a new place, uh, being able to help build those bridges and connections to community here. Also should note with that question, um, not all of the projects that fellows work on will be specific to San Diego. So there is it's certainly um, a bulk of the work will be on moving capital into the local community through our advanced strategy. There are additional projects that we work on uh, on a national scale and are exploring and, and can use additional support around those. So, um, some in the shared ownership space, some in, in clean tech and in inclusive green economy, um, and some other things that are not specific to a geography. Okay, last call for any questions. These are good questions. All right, with that, I want to, oh, nope, one more question. How often will we participate in community outreach and field work? That's an excellent question. I would say that fellows will probably be going to uh, an average of three community events a month. Um, that's events and outreach being quite broadly defined. What we've found in our work is that you know, finance is not accessible for many, and that's true at a career level, and that's true at a individual project level. And so we often are having one-on-one -on -one meetings or small group meetings with community champions, and in this process, we would have uh, fellows join myself and Shreya at meetings with our champions out in the community and with folks that you identify that could become champions. And the other opportunities that we will have as it relates to community connections is beyond community and events, fellows will be expected to have a core role in screening and assessing potential impact investment opportunities, specifically around our loan fund. So what will come with that is the opportunity to engage with nonprofit organization leaders small business leaders, and really connecting with them to understand what their capital needs are and how impact-based capital could help them achieve both their business goals and the community impact that they want to see. So beyond community meetings and events, there will be regular opportunities to talk with nonprofit leaders and small business owners as well. Great. Um, we got two other questions. One is, um, are there specific districts the program will focus on impacting? Um, and yes and no. Again, uh, there, there are, I guess I would say, by geographic areas, not coastal San Diego where most of the money is. Um, there's plenty of opportunity is given to those areas for the most part. I would um, 
maybe not including Imperial Beach and National City. But for the most part, the like La Jolla and Pacific Beach and Rancho Santa Fe, they're fine. Um, so we're looking at exploring how to sensitively invest in other neighborhoods. Um, we do have currently quite a few that are in the City Heights region. Um, we have many partnerships in the Promise Zone um, and have also a surprising little pocket up in rural North County. So we are eager to expand and explore how we can invest in other areas, but we really look at what's, how, what's the plan here, how exciting is it, and how can we help them grow with flexible capital. And I'll just add to that beyond the geographic areas that we want to make positive community impact in. Our impact theory, our impact framework, that will be an area that fellows will receive onboarding and orientation in. But specifically, we use a framework of economic opportunity and the different examples of pathways where we are looking to make an impact in could be in the areas of quality job creation, they could be in workforce development, they could be in things like affordable housing construction, uh, addressing the social determinants of health. So that gives you a little bit of a flavor of impact we're looking to make um, in addition to the geographic areas that we work in. Great. So one other question um, or clarification, Shreya was talking about our advanced loan fund and we put maybe an invisible asterisk on loan where we also are making some investments in accordance with Islamic financing principles. So they are not um, generating reba or interest, but are structured to be culturally sensitive for our communities. Particularly, we did this with Somali Family Service in City Heights, as many East African Muslims um, are particularly uncomfortable with interest. So we like, I hope that's an example of how we are thinking creatively about how capital is and isn't flowing. And for us, that was a learning with our, our borrowers coming in and, and asking for something they couldn't fit into traditional bank criteria. Um, and we said, let's think, let's, let's think creatively and make a custom solution so that this really promising organization can get the capital that they need to grow and execute a great program. And so we're hopeful that through this fellowship, we'll have other opportunities like that where we didn't fully realize, not having anybody who practiced the faith of Islam on our team, that somebody else with a different lived and learned experience can say, here's a barrier that is my community is facing, and here's what, here's what the challenge is, and then we can think creatively together on how to get over that. Nobody's on the phone sending in questions, um, but you're welcome to do that at any time. If people have any questions about the finance that we currently do, I gave a, a little flavor of it with Somali Family Service, um, but can expand if you're particularly interested in some of the more mechanics. Seems like we're good on questions for today. Um, again, feel free to reach out to us. We are on many, many channels that you can reach us. Certainly learn more at missiondrivenfinance.com slash fellowship. That's where the frequently asked questions that Shreya brought up are listed. You can see the entire application just at, with one click. We wanted to make it easy because I think everybody's been frustrated with a multi-page application and then get surprised by a question down the line. Um, so you can see it all at once. 
uh, easy to apply. You can save your progress, so to speak, by fully submitting an application. You can put just some placeholder text in, in the required fields, and then you're welcome to edit your submission up until the deadline of um, midnight, the end of February 7th. Um, so that's how you would save your progress if you wanted to get started and move forward with things. Um, if you have other questions, again, feel free to email us at jobs at missiondrivenfinance.com. That's up on your screen as well and on the website. And we'll, one of our team will get back to you and answer your question. Um, feel free to send us messages on any of the social media platforms that you like, and we'll answer your questions there too.